To be an acrobat takes a lot of courage, it takes a lot of determination, it takes a lot of um, practice. Most important, you have to love it. What I love is to make the people happy. When I'm happiest is, is when I see a standing ovation. I know my job is done. This week on African Voices, meet Zimbabwean Winston Ruddell, an unorthodox circus producer who scouts the African continent to find the most talented performers. Winston Ruddell joined the circus at 16 after he saw a group of Tanzanian acrobats perform in Zimbabwe. After a career lasting 20 years, he retired as a performer in 2003. Choosing to stay in the business, he wanted to create his own show. The acrobats who inspired him as a boy were from Tanzania, so Ruddle moved to the capital Dar es Salaam to find his talent. I started looking for the, the best guys who have the best potential, who I can train in a, in a fast way. I started asking people, telling them what I want. I'm looking for acrobats. I managed to, to meet up with um, seven guys who were really, you know, who I really liked. I said, yeah, these guys will be the ones that I'll be able to build up the show that I want. And I started to train them. This is actually the place where we started. Uh, when I first came to Tanzania, I did an audition. I auditioned some guys that I, cause I wanted to put a, a group together. And this is where we first started our rehearsals. It wasn't like this. As far as I can remember, it wasn't like this. It's actually quite nice now. In, two, in 2000, 2003, this was dust. It wasn't, um, it, it didn't have a cement floor like this. Actually, uh, when Winston came here, we didn't know how um, acrobatic is going. We just, um, sometimes we practice hard. We don't know the basic way. So when Winston came, came here and then started uh, teaching us and sometimes we say, ah, Winston, we, are we going to manage to do this? He said, yeah, yes, yes, we can. Just carry on practice, you know? Yeah. In the beginning, we didn't have equipment, so we had to use the trees and, you know, for, to try to teach the people. I had, to, I had to try to teach them, you know, ways of how to, you know, to hold, to hold somebody or something. So we had to use that, that tree. That tree. Okay, this tree was still very small. Okay, it now small, it's big. Yeah, now it was a small tree. <laughs> it was difficult every t any time we would fall down, yeah. turn and fall down. It was, no, I can't want to do this. So we can't do this. <laughs> so it was very funny yeah. for us, no? Yeah. Rodol and his group named themselves the Hakuna Matata Acrobats, meaning no problem in Swahili. And he started promoting his small troupe. I was approached by a a very, very prominent promoter who is actually uh, you as the promoter and manager of Michael Jackson and Pavarotti. His name is Matthias Hoffman and he says he wants to build an African show. So Ruddle and Hoffman teamed up and in 2004 started looking for talent throughout the continent. I scouted from Egypt, Sudan, Ethiopia. I did all the scouting. After doing the scouting, we had a meeting with Matthias Hoffman and they looked at all the acts, but they said, okay, right, we need these acts to be more, uh, more professional or much better. But so that is how we began in the school in Tanzania. So what he did was, okay, he invested some money and, with me and I came back to Tanzania and we kind of like opened a, a trading place where I could make the, the acrobats better than what they were. In 2005, Ruddle and Hoffman put on their first shows in Germany with artists trained by Ruddle. That show became one of the most successful Af African shows. It was called Africa Africa. The next year, Ruddle and Hoffman parted company and Ruddle moved on to his next project. But my skills and what I knew and I, and I said, all right, I'm going to build my own show 
which was Mother Africa. Mother Africa still exists, and since then I've managed to build nine different productions using acrobats from the school. Ruddle's productions are sold to promoters who tour the shows around the world, but his main focus has always been creating new talent. This has been a passion of mine for many, many years, and the school I've created for where young Africans and young Tanzanians can learn and become professional acrobats. Come with me and see the Hakuna Matata acrobats. It's just like, for example, like a football team. You have the, the seniors, then you have juniors, and sometimes the, the older acrobats, they might retire. So we always have to have some, some you know, juniors coming up who are going to replace them. So we try to, every Fridays and in the school holidays, we try to build an interest. The kids, they come over here and then they train, and they build an interest so that in the future, if they do decide to become an acrobat or an artist or a dancer, then they, they, they already at least have the basic skills. The way the school works at the moment is um, I have a lot of kids that come and train. Uh, we have the very young ones, then we have the intermediate, and then we have the ones who are a little bit better, and then the professional ones. Okay, but the dream is for everyone to become professional. More than 600 students have come through Ruddle's school, and some of them have become some of Africa's best acrobats. Former acrobat Winston Ruddle opened his Hakuna Matata School of Acrobatics in 2004. It's produced some of the best talent in Africa. One hand. Okay, come with me. I want to show you somebody else. Okay. Yo, Pengo. What's up? Oh, yeah. uh -huh. All right. Good? Good? Okay. Now, this guy, his name is Pengo. Um, and he's been with, he's been with, um, with uh, Hakuna Matata Acrobats, I think since 2004, 2003, 2004, yeah. He was one of the, also in the beginning when I opened the school. But his story is very special because, <laughs> his story is spe special because he wasn't, he wasn't even a, a talented acrobat. When he joined the school, um, I never thought, you know, he would even... Uh, get to the stage where he is un until now okay and okay with a lot of practice and a lot of discipline and a lot of crying because he used to cry a lot because every time i would take you know the maybe the other guys would go overseas i would always leave him behind and he used to cry how come i'm not going overseas and i said pengo your chance will come but you have to be good enough you know so he really pushed himself so with a lot of push and a lot of, you know, um, I can say dedication, a lot of dedication, he's managed to get to, like, to be one of, one of the top acrobats in the school. And he's, you know, he's, he's managed to create his own solo acts. He's also managed to, to help train other, the, other act, the younger acrobats and also better his acrobatic skills. I can say it's like our talent. Because we started from bottom, now we're here. So no matter how it is, you have to push it. Because before I was trying, I was not just like this, I was more skinny. He was, yeah, well, he was yeah. very, very, he was a yeah. very skinny, oh my God, he was <laughs> yeah. a, a slim, yeah. very like skinny guy, no muscle, Nothing. no talent at all. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I was coming here and pushing myself. I was coming in practice press at 6 in morning until 6 in evening. This is an act that uh, Pengo created on his own with some ideas and with my help. I've, we've managed to create an act. Pengo, you can just show one of it, one or two tricks for body chance. Yeah. 
Yeah. This is Zaina. She's been she's been with the with my school in the school. I think like seven or eight years. I don't remember how long. It's with them when they were like 15 or 14 and they were the first ever hand-to-hand -hand, African hand-to-hand -hand act ladies and gentlemen the Ramadani brothers I want to invest in not only just have the the artists come and be acrobats because a lot of the acrobats that I have they can't even sign a contract or they can't even read a contract so what I want them to do is have um, the school to have a um, an academic side and that must go hand in hand with the acrobatics so they they must be proficient in the acrobatics as well as the academics Thank you. 